This tutorial is going to help you find the slope of a graph. Um, we know that slope and rate of change are the exact same thing. So if I asked you to find the rate of change of a graph, it's the same thing as finding slope. So you could see I used both terms there. Okay, and we know that slope is rise over run. And rise is your y-axis, which goes up and down. And run is your x-axis. And so um, two things that you might have trouble remembering. If you have trouble remembering the y-axis, the way I do it, let me do it on a spare sheet of paper, is the y-axis you can actually make into the letter y. So if you have trouble, you get them confused. If you make a y, that is the y-axis. You can't do that with the x-axis, it wouldn't work. So the axis that you can turn into a y is the way you can remember that that is the y-axis. The second thing is rise over run, and the way you can remember that if you're gonna deal with your y, the rise first, is before you get up and run in the morning, you have to rise out of bed. So you rise in the morning, and then you go run. So you count your rise first, and then you count your run, okay? So when I'm looking at this first one, I need to pick any two points to count between, okay? I could pick this very bottom and the very top, but if you pick two points that have points in between them, you will have to reduce. And I like to not have to reduce if I don't have to. So I'm gonna pick two close points that don't have any points in between them, okay? So what I like to do is I always like to start from the bottom. So I am going to start here at this bottom point and I'm going to count how much I went up to get to this next point. So I went up once. Up is a positive movement, so my rise is one because I went up once. Okay, so now I'm right here. And how many did I go over to get to the next coordinate? I went right one, so my run is one. And it's a positive one because right is a positive movement. And one over one is just one. Okay, let's look at number two. So number two, I see a graph, and um, I should have probably talked about this on number one. Number one, this graph is going up. So just by looking at it, I could tell that it is a positive slope because the graph is going up. And positive slopes go up. So let's look at number two. Number two is going down. So before I do anything else, I know that this graph is going to have a negative slope because the graph is going down. Okay, so I need to pick, I need to find the rise over run, which is the slope. So I'm gonna pick two points to count between. You could pick any two that you want to, but if you pick two that are not the closest, you will have to reduce. I always start from the bottom. And from the bottom to get to the next point, I went up one, two. So my rise is a positive two because I went up and up is positive. Okay, so now I'm here where my marker is and I need to get to this point. So I went left, one, two, three. Left is a positive, excuse me, a negative movement. So my run is a negative three. Now we talked about in class the other day, a numerator and a denominator are not negative. It's actually the whole thing. So there's my answer. Okay. Number three. So before I even try to figure out actually what the slope is, I can see that this graph is going down. That means it is a negative slope. And then I need to count between two of the closest points. Okay, I always start at the bottom. You could start at the top, but I just choose to start at the bottom. And that means my rise will always be positive because I'll always be going up to the next point. So if I start at this point, to get to that one, I go up one, two, three, four. So my rise 
is a positive four because I went up. So now to get from here to the next point, I went left, one, two, three, four, five. Left is negative, so my run is negative five. But it's not really the five that's negative, it's the whole fraction that's negative. Number four, is this a positive or a negative graph? You should have answered positive because the graph is going up. Okay, so I need to pick two of the closest points. I'm gonna pick here and here. I'm gonna count the rise first, which is how much it went up or down. And my rise was one, two. So I went, to get from this point to this point, I went up two. And my run, one, two, three to the right. That's a positive movement. So my slope is two over three. Okay, number five. So try to decide, is it going to be positive or negative? Count between two of the closest points. If I accidentally miss, I don't see that there's a point there and I pick these two, I'm just going to have to reduce at the end. That's not that big of a deal. So I'm going to circle my two points. I always start at the bottom. I'm going to count how many I went from this point to this point. So my rise, one, two, three. My rise is three. Never start counting with where you are. You start counting once you move it. Okay, and I went over one to the right. That's positive. So my slope is three over one or just three. Okay, number six. Is number six positive or negative? Number six is negative, so this graph is going down, so I know my slope is gonna be negative, okay? I'm gonna pick two of the closest points. I actually only see two points this time. I start at the bottom, so to get from the bottom to the next one, I went up one. Up is a positive movement, so my rise is one. And I went one, two, three, four, Five to the left. Left is a negative movement, but it's not the five that's negative. It's the whole thing. Okay. Number seven, positive or negative? It should be positive. So I'm gonna pick between two points. Start at the bottom. How many did you go up to get to the other point? Don't start counting here. Don't count where you were sitting, where that point is. Your first movement is the first count. So one, two. I went up two, so my rise is a positive two. And now I'm here and I go, over one to the right. Right is a positive movement. So my run is positive one and two over one is two. Number eight, is this positive or negative? And then I want you to solve this. So if you need help, please ask me. This would be a great time. Pause your video. Ask me, say, Ms. Pena, I need help, I don't get this, and I will come over to you. Okay, your last two. Rise over run. So if I ask you to find the slope or the rate of change of this graph, pick two points, count between them. How much should I go up to get from this bottom one to the next one? And I went up one, two, 
three. So my rise is three. How many did I go over to get from this point to this point? Well, I didn't go over any. So my run is zero. And we haven't really talked about this yet, but when we have zero on the denominator, the slope is called undefined. It's not that there's no slope, there's always a slope. It is just an undefined slope. Okay, and let's look at this last one. Rise over run. So I'm gonna go from point to point and to get from one point to another, I didn't go up or down at all. So my rise is zero. And my run, I went right two. Or you could have said, you know what, I went left two. It doesn't matter because zero over any number is zero. So if you are just walking across the floor of my room, it is a zero slope. There's no increase, there's no decrease. It's just totally flat. That's a zero slope. I like to think of this vertical line as undefined because we can't do it. We can't walk that way. We can't define how you would walk because we can't walk up a wall. We're not Spider-Man, okay? So zero, totally flat surface. A undefined slope is a vertical line. We can't walk that.